There we go. All right. Prayer is not reporting to the boss. Prayer is not a 911 number that we can call when it's convenient. Prayer is not an exercise in calisthenics. Prayer is not a drive through And prayer is definitely not a religious routine. He also tells them, don't use vain repetitions. While Jesus encouraged persistent prayer, in Luke 18, verses 1 through 8, and soon would give a pattern for prayer, here in Matthew 6, 9 through 13, he condemned the shallow repetition of words of those who, by those who did not have a personal relationship with the Father. Jesus was basically telling followers, according to the Greek, don't babble on as people and other religions do. The believers did not pray to idols or wood or stone. They prayed to the one and true living God. God doesn't need our prayers, but He wants our prayers and knows that we need them. Prayer develops the trust that says, Father, You know best. You know best. Therefore, since Jesus wasn't discouraging corporate prayer to gather, but a false religious, but wasn't discouraging corporate religion to gather, but he was condemning the false religious piety, we can understand our times of corporate prayer should be a result of, of private prayer. Mm-hmm. There are times where we need to gather together to pray in God's house. There are times where we need to call on God and trust in Him together. Yes, we need to have our prayer life private. But when we come together to worship, we worship corporately. Mm-hmm. And it takes all of us, not just one. Right. So let's look at this prayer model of Jesus and what it means. First of all, Verse 9 says, After this manner pray ye, our Father which is art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Father. Jesus' purpose on earth was to point people to the Father. We read in John 10, 30, I and my Father am one. We read in John 14, 7 through 9, If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He hath seen me, hath seen the Father. How sayest thou then, Show us the Father? But notice the term here, Our Father. The term for Father in the Greek is Abba, or basically meaning paternal dad. It is used three other times in the New Testament as it relates to adoption. Two of them in the letters of Paul, Romans 8.15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Galatians 4, 6, And because you are sons, God has sent him forth the spirit, sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. He's our Father this evening. He is our Heavenly Father this yes, evening. Yes, yes. He is a God who is not a statue. Right. He's a God who's not a necklace. Right. He's a God who's not a crystal. Right. He's a God that's not a symbol. Right. He's a God that's not a mortal man or a distant object. He yes. is our Father this yes, evening. Yes, now I want you to understand, He's everywhere we go. Yes, he is. He's here in this building tonight. He'll be with you when you get in your cars to go home. He'll be with you tomorrow on your jobs. He'll be with you next week, next month, because He's ever present. Yes, praise the Lord. Thank but you, we Lord. must, through prayer, acknowledge that. Uh-huh. That He is our Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Father. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, When we say that God is in heaven, that means He reigns supreme. Uh He's in heaven tonight, Uh sitting on His throne. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. And His Holy Spirit is with us in our midst. He's not in a manger. He's not on the cross. And He's certainly not in the tomb. 
He is alive this evening. Praise the Lord. And He wants to touch you and I at the Thank point you, of our Lord. need. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What does it mean that God is in heaven? It shows, first of all, His authority because He's on the throne. Secondly, it shows His plan because Jesus is at the right hand of the Father and the Spirit is moving today. Thirdly, it shows eternity. It shows His time. God is in heaven today and He wants to touch you. He's on His throne this evening. Yes, thank you. And then there's, Hallowed be thy name. The word here in the Greek for hallowed shows a continuous praise to God. The root word for this is halio, which is just a short, quick praise to God. Now here's the question. We must ask ourselves, are we giving Him a continuous praise or just a halo, halo, which is a quick praise? Are we giving Him a continuous praise or a quick praise? This also suggests that we should start our prayers with praising and worshiping God. So many times we wind up giving God a quick halo instead of continuous praise. Psalm 150 verses 1 through 6 says, Praise ye the Lord, praise God in His sanctuary, praise Him in the firmament of His power, praise Him for His mighty acts, praise Him according to His excellent greatness, praise Him with the sound of the trumpet, praise Him with the psaltery in the heart, praise Him with the timbrel and dance, praise Him with the string instruments and organs, Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Hebrews 13, 15. By Him therefore let us offer up the sacrifice of praise to God. Continue that as the fruit of our lips. Giving thanks unto His name. Look at verse 10. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What does this mean to pray thy kingdom come? Are we saying that God isn't in control yet? No. Are we saying that God's kingdom did not start at the crucifixion? No. Are we saying that God's kingdom is not going to come? No. I submit to you none of the above. Praying God's kingdom come recognizes the fact that God is the king in the Old Testament. Thy kingdom. We pray in your kingdom come does not suggest in any way that God has not been or is not presently sovereign king. That his only reign, reign is only future. He is already holy, so he is already king. Reigning in absolute sovereignty over both nature and history. Psalm 24, 7 through 10. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, He is the King of glory. Uh -huh. Psalm 89, 13, 18, For the Lord is our defense, and the Holy One of Israel is our King. Psalm 95, 3, For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. Praying God's kingdom recognizes that He is in the present. Jesus, is, Jesus came to earth, to this earth, to proclaim an already kingdom of God. But He spoke, he spoke about this in His ministry on earth. Matthew 4, 17, from this time Jesus began to preach and say, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Luke 17, 21, Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Everything Jesus did in, this minute, in His ministry proclaimed the kingdom of God. His parables taught us about the kingdom of God. His... Miracles demonstrated the kingdom of God. His life lived the kingdom of God. His death and resurrection fulfilled the already kingdom of God. His ascension established the already kingdom of God. But His coming will fulfill the not yet kingdom of God. Oh, hallelujah. No wonder He told us in Matthew 6, 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added 
unto you. Yes, praise the Lord. Praying thy kingdom come shows that we rely on the kingdom to meet our needs. It means we rely on God to meet our needs. God the Father, Jehovah. He's known as Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Right, yes, thank you, Lord. Jesus, the I am, mm -hmm. the great I am. The Holy Spirit moving through His presence with us. No wonder Paul said in 1 Corinthians 4.20, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Pray in the kingdom of God also recognizes the future. Through God, though God is already king, his reign is also future. The word the word come refers to a decisive time in the future when the kingdom will come once and for all. An event that will happen only once. Keep in mind that that the rapture is when Jesus comes to meet us in the air. His second coming is when he comes back on earth again. So we must understand that. The kingdom of God should, should be the prayer of the church according to Revelation. Revelation 22, 17 through 20. And the spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that's a thirst to say, Come, and let him whosoever will let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of these prophecies book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto the plagues written in this book. If any man shall take away from the words of this book, God shall take away part out of the book of life, out, out, out of the holy city from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things say, Surely I come quickly. The Spirit and the bride say, Come. Amen. That's a picture of the Holy Spirit moving in its church and the body of Christ agreeing with the Spirit of God. Uh -huh. Thy will be done. When we desire the kingdom of God in our lives to come, we must desire His will to be done in our lives as well. His will becomes the top priority. My will wants to go its own way. But being in the kingdom means my will is bent to God's will. It means repentance. Jesus often said the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. Being a Christian, a member of the kingdom, means that we're not to just do always what we want, but what God wants. Mark 1.15, And saying the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. The seven churches in Revelation, Jesus' word to, to them was repent. Second, the prayer for your will to be done is a prayer of commitment. A commitment to do the will of God. This was the testimony of Jesus in John 4 verse 34. Jesus said unto him, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. John 6, 38, For I came down from heaven not to my own will, but to the will of Him that sent me. This was an issue for the early church. Because when you get to James chapter 4, verse 15, He says, For thou art to say, If the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. They were bragging about everything instead of praying about everything. And what we've got to do, folks, is we've got to be people of prayer. Third, this prayer shows a dependence, a profound dependence upon God. We must depend on Him. Jeremiah 33, 3, Call unto me and I'll answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. John 14, 14, thou, If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. 1 John 5, 14, This is confidence we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. On earth as it is in heaven. The accomplishment of God's will on earth obviously means the overturning of the present evil order and thus the regeneration of the earth as we know it. God's will be done in the realm of His sovereign transcendence. Let that sovereignty now be expressed upon the earth. This could also be understood as a petition for the will of God to be done both in heaven and on earth. 
When we are praying this, we want everything under His Lordship. We want everything under His Lordship. Philippians 2, 10 through 11, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Revelation 19, 15, out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations and shall rule them with a rod of iron and tread in the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. Now, Facebookers, those that are watching this on Facebook, um, I will be putting this online on the church page for you that I'm giving to them, so that way you'll have a um, copy of it. Sister Janie, would you pass this out, please? This is a biblical model of prayer based on the Lord's Prayer. This is something that we will use when we do our prayer time on Sunday evening starting on October the 3rd. As we said Sunday night, when, when the ones that were here agreed to it, we would start at 5 p.m., we will open the service with a song or two. We'll have a brief devotion and then we'll spend the time in prayer. Praying for our church. Praying for our city, our state, our country. Praying for everything. And not only that, worshiping God. Worshiping God. What did Jesus say? My house shall be called a house of prayer. Prayer. So that's what we're going to be striving to do in October. I'm just believing God for some great things. I've heard of great reports from other churches that have took either their Sunday night or their midweek and made it prayer time, and they're starting to see God move on Sunday mornings. Growth is taking place. People are being saved. Amen. And I believe God is no respecter of persons, and He can do this. if He can do it there, He can do it here. Right. Amen. 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 So keep this. I wanted you to have that. And next week when we meet again, we're going to cover the other three parts of this and learn about prayer in the early church. Thank you for being here tonight. Sorry the video went out, but we got it back on. And um, we'll do some editing and all that stuff. And and have everything on CD for those that want it on CD. Let's pray together this evening. Father, Lord, we know you're in heaven tonight yes. on the throne. Thank you, Father God. We know Jesus is at the right hand making intercession for us, and we have your Holy Spirit here. That's how the Trinity works. And I'm asking God that you would touch us. I pray, God, you would help us tonight. Pray you would give us strength. We praise you, God, for being who you are. Yes. We pray your will be done in our lives and in the church. We pray, God, also, Lord, that you would just meet every need. We pray, God, that you would forgive us, Lord, of our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. And God, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one, the adversary, the devil, the accuser, and the brethren. Because, Lord, your soon return is near. And we praise you for your kingdom, your power, and your glory, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's pray for Jenna. We've got to pray for Jenna.